What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious for everything Google that we can pack inside of a show. Now, the Nexus 9 is on sale this week and is getting solid overall reviews with its refined construction and design. It's the first tablet to run Android 5.0 Lollipop, one of its high points, but it's still a little sluggish performance-wise with a price point aimed to compete directly with the iPad starting at $399 with the same resolution and aspect ratio for its screen. Now, for Android users, this is one of the top options for a tablet right now, especially if you're a fan of pure Android. But the best feature has to be its front-facing speakers, and it's about time that every company do this with a tablet. All right, now for the Nexus Play review, there's not as many good things to say about this guy. Hopefully, it will be more significant as time goes on, but right now, its lack of apps and developer support hurt it a lot, especially when you compare it to the Roku, Apple TV, and the Amazon Fire TV. So if you already have one of those streaming boxes, and I'm guessing you might have a Chromecast on the side already, I just don't see the need for you to add this to your collection at all for now. And in new things from Google, how about their new calendar app in Lollipop that's also coming to Android 4.1 and higher devices in the next few weeks? Now you might not think a calendar app is that sexy. I can. But look at this thing. The way it creates new events with its schedule view and its imagery make it the slickest calendar out there. Now, I can't believe I'm actually excited about a calendar app, and it's also going to be coming to iPhone users in the future. And don't forget about the Nest. Google owns the smart thermostat company. It's getting a new software update that provides improved auto scheduling and a cleaner interface with faster access to info at a glance. Now, Nest also recently acquired the home automation company, Revolve, and it's been building its Works with Nest program to include Dropcam, which Nest also acquired back in June. Now, it's not getting the most publicity yet, but quietly, Nest and Google are making a push to become your smart home platform before their competitors. All right, let's switch over to Samsung, and after steadily declining revenues and profits in recent months, a report from Sam Mobile says the Korean giant is reshuffling its priorities and developing the Galaxy S6 codenamed Project Zero from scratch in a push to make it its best flagship phone yet. Now, uh, you'd like to think that's something every company is always doing. Some of the preliminary specs from their insiders reveal their next phone will adopt the trend of using more metal on the device for a premium feel, a quad HD display with no actual screen size confirmed yet. They are still deciding between a 16 and 20 megapixel camera that will use the same IMX240 camera sensor found on the Note 4, and the brand new Exynos 7420 octa-core 64-bit chip. Now, there's a lot more specs being thrown around here and there, but they are all still unofficial, and we'll keep you guys posted. And what about the Galaxy Note Edge? If this is the phone you've been waiting for, the official release date in the US will be November the 14th on all major carriers, starting at $399 with a two-year contract. Now, honestly, I don't know how successful this product is going to actually be, and it's really up to developers to take advantage of that curved edge, but this is hands down the most innovative product of 2014 for me, whether it succeeds or fails. All right, if you like hanging out at coffee shops and you want the best Wi-Fi speeds possible, your best bet, check this out, is the Starbucks in Kansas City, Missouri at the corner of 41st and Main Street. So what's so special? How about up to 100 times faster than usual Wi-Fi thanks to its Google Fiber connection? Yes, it's now the fastest Starbucks Wi-Fi in the US. And you can put that into the Guinness Book of World Records since really there's a record for everything now. And we end things on a high note. It was recently the 86th anniversary for the Japanese national tradition of radio calisthenics. Now, for 86 years, people in Japan have started their days with a short calisthenic routine that's broadcast on television. So Google decided to get in on the fun with the letters of the Google logo to create their own doodle celebrating this tradition. Oh. Now, I also have my own set of personal stretches in the morning, but CNET would not allow me to show them to you. All right, that's going to do for this week's show. You can always email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll answer them when I can. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.